Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at TrueNAS Scale. Yeah, it's the beta version right after this. This came out in August, obviously. I mean, it, it, we're going to look, it's an early look at, at TrueNAS Scale. And of course, this is the 2108. Uh, beta version, which, yeah, August. It's the 21-year, 08 month. So what is it? So it's built on TrueNAS Core. I mean, it's not part of FreeBSD or anything like that, but they took the code base from TrueNAS Core and migrated it to Linux. They've added Linux containers to this. They've added KVM to it, and they provide something they call scale-out ZFS, which, of course, there is no such thing. Uh, ZFS scale-out is provided by cluster clusters actually mounting ZFS file systems. So, yeah, a little bit of a difference. But hey, they can market it any way they want. But there is no such thing as scale-out ZFS. Uh, so that helps them with their acronym. The S in scaled is scale out ZBS. C is converged. Hyper, it's active active. Uh, and as far as being able to do failover and that type of thing, and then it supports Linux containers and it's easy to manage. Um, some of the features in this kind of fall into four general general categories. There's the management layer to the left which has your web UI, your virtual private networks, and then underneath that you have like your cluster management and proactive support. Then your storage area is above that, which has object storage pools, block storage pools, and file storage pools. Uh, we'll talk more about some of the in-depth things that are here. Uh, there's also a number of apps you can install with TrueNAS. Uh, of course, that's nothing new. That's That's been around since the TrueNAS core and also the uh, FreeNAS versions of the software as well. So, yeah, you can install Plex and Iconix, uh, Nextcloud, and uh, Jenkins. There's also Docker and Kubernetes that are underneath that as well that you can also install. Uh, the KVM support allows virtual machines for Windows and Linux and also FreeBSD, which isn't listed here, which is kind of weird, but I guess that's okay. The roadmap are, yeah, we talked about the release numbers. 2108 was August 2010. The 20, 2110 will be heading into the first release candidate for TrueNAS scale. Uh, and, of course, that'll be in sometime in October. TrueNAS Scale at this point is really meant for use by developers, testers, if you're a, a, technology, a technology enthusiast, or if you're an early adopter, you might find this home. But if you're a business user, go back to TrueNAS Core because your system may not be stable enough to support an enterprise environment. However, uh, the 2108 is a feature complete release. That is, it hasn't been fully tested, but all of the features that they want in this particular version are present. Uh, it does include a clustered SMB, uh, and we'll talk more about that. But uh, uh, there's also a much improved Windows uh, uh, ACL editor, so it allows you to, your access control list allows you to uh, match those up more completely with the way Windows does it. Uh, there's also improved systems and sharing dashboards so that you can get a handle on what's going on with the machine, what's going on with the shares, and also the storage pools underneath. Uh, there is enclosure management, and there this is also based on OpenZFS 2.1. You'll probably find some older documentation that's out on their site that it was written back in September of 2020 that references a uh, release candidate version of OpenZFS 2.0, but that OpenZFS is no longer in release candidate status. It's officially released, has been since December of last year, and they're currently working on 2.2 right now. Uh, the, the container storage interface is CSI, there's also an applications catalog and improvement. Uh, so you have some, you have the ability to install the default apps that come with the system, and you can also install custom ones. 
there is a improved web UI, and we'll look at that as well. So one of the things you'll first come up to is see the dashboard, and this is not unlike previous versions of TrueNAS Core, um, but you'll probably find some Linux things that are on here now that, uh, you know, like your KVM support as well. So yeah, you have your system information. You can pick and choose what you want on this dashboard. So yeah, so if you want more information about different areas of the system, you can, it's in the config box up there on the right-hand side. You can just pick that and then check off what's some of the things that you want to look at in addition to what is default. Uh, and then your menu item list is on the left-hand side. And across the top, there is um, there is something called True Command now, which True Command is a cloud service. And I think it is it is a commercial service, but it allows you to manage your TrueNAS machines across all of the clusters. So if you, when you are in a, eventually in an enterprise environment with, excuse me, with this, you will be able to see the status and activity that's going on across all of your machines if you wish to pay for that. Uh, you, can, you can start out with a single node, of course, and then you can scale out to over 100 storage nodes, and each of those storage nodes can have many compute nodes. So, and those compute nodes can be in virtual machine form or in Docker container form. Uh, there, the type of shares that are offered with this is a uh, server message block or SMB. Of course, most people refer to that as Windows shares. The network file system or NFS shares, which would be more Linux-like or Unix-like. Uh, the Internet Small Computer Systems Interface, iSCSI, which is normally used as object stores. And uh, that would then allow you to store the VMs themselves, for example, in that object store. Uh, web Distributed Authoring and Versioning, or WebDAV. Gluster I have is a question mark because there's mentions uh, of it as being available, but it's not, I mean, it's not part of the web UI currently, but I'm going to test and see if I can actually hook up to their Gluster server. So I'm curious as if I can actually see their Gluster clusters or not. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. So we'll play around with that today. That's why I have a question mark there as to whether or not I can mount their, their shares uh, directly. As far as directory services are concerned, you have a number of choices you can use, and that is, of course, Active Directory. LDAP will work as well. There's also IDMAP, which is how you would map uh, a Windows directory service over to some, uh, some other form of directory service, whether that be LDAP or whether that be even uh, just a normal Etsy password. Uh, Kerberos, uh, you also have available to you, and of course that allows you to pass keys uh, back and forth to authenticate and authorize users to use certain applications on the machine. So yes, and it does support the Windows version of Kerberos. Virtualization, this is, this is new. It did not have this available on TrueNAS Core. It allows you to set up virtual machines on the TrueNAS uh, uh, host. So you can, this will run alongside a TrueNAS and you can bring up guest OSs, which can be Windows, they can be Linux, and they can also be FreeBSD. I didn't see any mention of hosting Mac, o, uh, Mac OS. Those are your three uh, ones that you can have. Now you'll see some of the documentation just mention Windows and Linux, but if you go actually to the dashboard, FreeBSD is an option as well. Uh, yeah, from there, you can then pick what virtual CPUs and virtual memory you want to allocate from the host over to that. Now, remember, don't allocate so much that you leave your ZFS <laughs> file caches hanging. Uh, yeah, so or your performance may suffer. So, yeah, you know, use a little common sense. Um, you can also pass your disks or ZVols. They, they will be created as ZVols on top of the ZFS pool. So... Yeah, if you're worried about, oh, it's just going to be a file. Oh, no, that's performance is going to be horrible. No, it actually creates a Z-ball to do that. Uh, network interfaces, you can, of course, pass virtualized uh, interfaces and share your bandwidth with the main network. Again, use some common sense uh, in how you configure your machines because you don't want uh, to interfere with the performance of your file shares going out over a single network card. 
you probably would want to dedicate an additional NIC to do uh, your network interface for your virtualization in order to maintain a good performance. Uh, the installation media, you know, I, I don't like to mix loads on, on NICs. I mean, <laughs> that's just not a good idea, especially how cheap they are. I mean, it's not like they, they're very expensive. So uh, install media can, for your virtual machines, your ISOs, they can be on the local media installed under a data set if you wish, or you can upload them from your workstation at the time that you're constructing the uh, virtual machine. So either way you want to do that is fine. GPUs, now they don't, now they do talk about pass through of the GPU to the uh, virtual machine, but not directly. So, uh, yeah, it's a little sketchy here on, uh, on how you select a GPU to be assigned to a VM, but I'm assuming it's a similar method to other ways of passing through a, a, a GPU to the virtual machine. So, you would either need a, um, a graphics card, which can host multiple virtual copies of a GPU that you can then divvy out to the different uh, virtual machines. Or if you're using a gaming uh, GPU, of course, you would only be able to pass that once uh, to ABM and nothing else. Uh, apps, uh, official applications are Plex, NextCloud, Minio, custom applications that you can pick, and those can be Docker images if you wish. There's a number of reporting th uh, elements within the system, too, that you can drill into that will show you graphically how, what your machine is doing, uh, what the percent uh, activity on your CPU and your threads are. Uh, also, the amount of I.O. that's being read and written to the disk. You can look at how much memory is in use. And on the main... Uh, on the main uh, dashboard, it'll actually break it up into the the uh, different categories of memory available, um, your ZFS disk cache, and then what's in use by the system. And then you have your network interfaces. You can look at those and see how much uh, how much traffic they're carrying as an aggregate. And then NFS, you can look at your NFS shares. You can also look at what your partitions are doing, what your systems are doing. Also, your targets, your iSCSI targets, and your ZFS pools, what kind of traffic they're carrying as well. So I, I don't think they're done with this, but that's fairly comprehensive for a start. I mean, that would definitely be enough information to be able to manage a system on a day-to-day -day basis, I would think. you probably And there is an alert system that you can turn on for notification of different problems in the system as well. Uh, in the system settings, you have a number of categories for like updating the, the uh, software on the system that would include the operating system as well as the TrueNAS software stack and, and the applications that are supported by them. Uh, there's general settings <clears throat> that allow you to set up the, you know, the host name and all that. Uh, advanced settings drill down into other features of the system, and then there's boot. Uh, boot settings and services settings. This will let, let you pick and choose what services you want running. You can monitor them to see if they're up or down. And then you also have a shell access if you wish. As far as hardware con requirements are concerned, now these are minimums, so don't take this as being recommend recommendations. They are not. Uh, you'd have to do your own dual diligence as to how big your file systems are going to be and how many users you have, what types of file sharing you're doing, if you're going to do virtual machines, how many, what type, and what are their particular uh, load characteristics on the box. I mean, that that you, you can't apply a rule of thumb to. That's just you got to engineer it to whatever size you need. Uh, two core Intel or AMD x86-64, so they do require 64-bit architecture machines. Uh, memory 16 uh, Gibby bytes, and so you will need at least that much in order to bring up the system. Now, I am running mine under 8, so yeah, I'm a little bit under. It does seem to run okay, but I wouldn't rec it isn't recommended. So a boot device, at least 16 Gigi byte of uh, SSD storage. Uh, they do not recommend using rotational drives for that. Um, storage is two identically sized devices uh, or a single for a or a single storage pool uh, to be used in the system. So yeah, and again, those are minimums. 
high-speed interconnects that it supports. Now, these are the ones that they're recommending. And IX Systems does not recommend doing direct attached copper. So if, you're, if you have DAC interfaces in your systems for 10 gig uh, Ethernet connections, you may want to reconsider. They recommend uh, optical fiber. They don't recommend using DAC. So, uh, and that, don't blame me, that's them. Uh, that's their recommendation. So, so as far, if you want to virtualize TrueNAS scale itself, if you want to put it on a virtual machine, these are some of the things that you all want to look at. You want to pass your hardware disks to the, the uh, VM that you're going to be hosting on or pass the entire storage controller over to TrueNAS. Uh, also, you'll want to disable any automatic scrubbing of pools because if you have a repair in progress, you don't want to be scrubbing that disk at the same time. So, yeah, bad things can happen. Uh, use a minimum of three VDUBs, uh, of course, to, uh, to uh, pass to the system to be used for your pools. Provide 8 gig or more boot devices, so that's the size, and of course, adequate RAM to support your storage pools as well as any virtual machines and other system and, and the uh, system overhead as well to be calculated into that. Uh, they also recommend, of course, considering jumble frames. I've talked about that before on my channel. I mean. Uh, jumble frames have their pluses and minus. You might find they work. You might find they don't work in all applications. But in this instance, they do recommend you might consider them. So, And there's some more things you might want to look at. Those are kind of the major ones. Uh, you might look at the documentation for the rest of them. That's all I had for today. Um, TrueNAS scale looks interesting. Of course, it is a beta, and it's really early to tell whether or not how well it's going to perform actually in a production environment and actually see how well it actually does. Uh, and then the ideal system would be to set this up with NVMe drives and then push it and see how well it performs. That's all I had for today. Uh, and of course, as you know, uh, with the chip shortages and and the pandemic uh, going on, uh, we've got an issue with with uh, with some of the manufacturers substituting uh, inferior components on the different NVMe boards. I suspect they're probably also doing it on the SSDs as well, the SATA SSDs that is. So um, I know that Intel does not, but Intel uses QLC memory anyway. So on all their devices. So they don't advertise doing TLC. The issue has been that the TLC memory is being substituted for QLC and then the controllers are being substituted for ones that are, um, I wouldn't necessarily, I would say they were of lesser quality, not necessarily of lesser performance, but of lesser quality. So you may have some lifetime issues. However, as long as as long as the manufacturers stick to their warranty and they support them for as long as their warranty says, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Just make sure your data is backed up and uh, you're watching them closely as they start to age uh, because QLCs will wear out faster than TLCs do. So they don't have quite the lifespan. Uh, anyway, uh, and that's all I'll, I'll cover for today. I hope you enjoyed this. And to all my Patreons, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And, and thanks and goodbye. Hope to see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.